Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to draw a palm tree using the pattern brush technique to draw the tree trunk. This will make it easy to make all kind of fun shapes for the tree trunk. I'm Kent and this is Diagraphics. So the first thing we want to do is to enable the grid. So go to view, then go to show grid, then go to view again and snap to grid. Now we want to draw one of the sections of the tree trunk. So choose the pen tool and draw a shape like this. You can follow along with the squares. Now when the shape is completed, go to the selection tool and select the shape. Now we want to round off the corners a little bit. So to do this, go to the stroke menu and select round join. Then select a very wide stroke. And the wider the stroke you choose, the more round the corners will be. Now with the shape selected, go to object, go to path and select outline stroke. Then go down to pathfinder menu. If it isn't already open, you can go to window and go to pathfinder menu right here. Now go down to pathfinder menu and click unite. This will unite everything into one shape. Now color this shape the main color you want for your tree trunk. I have prepared these swatches right here and I will choose the light brown. If you want my exact swatches, you can download them from the link in the description. There will also be a link to one of my videos showing you how to import these swatches. So this is one section of the tree trunk. But to make it a little more interesting, we will draw a shadow in the bottom. To do this, select the rectangle tool and draw a box like this. Now go to the selection tool and select both these shapes. The size of this box does not matter, we only use it to cut off this part of the shape. So now choose the shape builder tool, hold down the alt key to subtract and subtract this part of the shape. This leaves us with two different shapes. This shape and this shape. So to make the shadow, select this shape and select the dark brown color. Now we have the section with the shadow. So now select both shapes, hold down the alt key to duplicate and drag this to the side. For this shape, we will delete the shadow. And this is basically the two shapes we need to make our tree trunk brush. Now when we are building pattern brushes, we will always build from the left to the right. This means that if we kept our shapes upright like this, the shapes will just be copied like this too when we are building our brush. But we want the sections to be on top of each other. So what we need to do is rotate them 90 degrees clockwise. So now select the shape, hold down the shift key while rotating to rotate 90 degrees. Do this with both shapes. And as you see, when we are building from left to the right, they will now be on top of each other. So now, just to make the brush a little bit smaller, we will select both shapes and scale them down a little bit. The exact size isn't important, as you can change this later. So now select one of these sections and drag this to the swatches menu. Select the other one and drag this to the swatches menu too. This is everything we need to build the brush. So now deselect the shape, go to the brushes menu, click new brush and select pattern brush. Click OK. From here you can give the brush a name. And as you see down here, this is where we are going to build our brush. So now select the start tile and this is going to be the tile without the shadow. This is the one with the shadow, so I will select the other one. The start tile is the first tile that will be created when you use your brush. So now we need to choose which tile we want stacked on top of the start tile. This is called the side tile and will be over here. For the side tile we want the section with the shadow. And appearance wise this would be it, but it is always a good idea to choose an end tile too. Even though the end tile is just the same tile as the side tile. So now just choose the section with the shadow once again. Choosing an end tile will save us for some issues later on. Now go down to colorization method and choose hue shift. This will make sure that we can easily change the color of the trunk later. And the shadow will even be matched to the tree trunk color automatically. So now click OK. And here we have our brush. If you want to change something later, you can always just double click and change it right here. So now we can delete these sections, select our brush, select the paintbrush tool and draw a tree trunk. And as you can see, this is our start tile, all this is the side tile and this is the end tile. And one of the cool features about drawing a tree trunk with a pattern brush is that now the tree trunk is basically only a stroke and you can apply stroke effects to it. This means that I can select the stroke and do things like using the width tool to shape the stroke. So to make the top of the trunk more narrow right before the leaves appear, 
we can use the width tool and just change the width right here. And you can play around with this exactly as you want. If we haven't picked an end tile, we would have some issues when narrowing the end of the tree trunk. Now we want to draw the leaves, so move the trunk to the side. So now choose the ellipse tool and draw a circle like this. Then go to edit, go to copy, then go to edit again and paste in front. Now we have two circles on top of each other. So while having the top circle selected, hold the Alt key and the shift key and make this circle a lot bigger. Now with the arrow keys, notch this circle down like this. So it leaves a shape that is two small squares tall. Now select both the shapes, select the shape builder tool, hold down the Alt key to subtract and subtract these shapes. Now select the shape and make it a fill instead of a stroke. Now we need to disable snap to grid. So go to view, go to snap to grid, then go to view again and hide grid. Now zoom in on the shape. You can color this leaf green already if you want, but for the sake of this video, I will start off by choosing a yellow swatch to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing in the next steps. So now it's easier to see the blue path around the leaf. Now choose the pen tool and to make the imperfections in the leaf, choose a spot and draw three anchor points like this. Then go a little bit to the right and do the same thing. Then once again, go to the right and draw three anchor points. You don't need to be precise right here. Now choose the direct selection tool and go to the middle of these three points and drag it up like this. Repeat this step for the other imperfections. To make it look realistic, don't screw the imperfections to the left, only to the right. Now with the three imperfections drawn, zoom out a little bit. Then unselect the shape by clicking away, then choose the pen tool again and choose this anchor point right here. Draw on top of this, then go to the right side and choose this anchor point right here. Then click and hold the mouse button to make a curvy line like this. Make sure it curves around the middle of the leaf, then draw all the way around the leaf. Now choose the selection tool and select both the shapes. Then go to the shape builder tool, hold down the Alt key to subtract and subtract this shape that we don't need. So now the leaf is ready and we need to color it. So choose the selection tool and select the inner part of the leaf. Go to swatches and choose a dark green. Now select the upper part and choose a light green. This will add some dimension to the leaf. Now we need to copy this leaf. So select both shapes, go to the rotate tool, hold down the Alt key and click this anchor point right here. Now rotate this leaf by 35 degrees and click copy and repeat this step by clicking Ctrl D. Now select all the shapes, choose the reflect tool and once again hold down the Alt key and click this anchor point right here. Reflect it vertical and click copy. Now once again choose the rotate tool and click the anchor point one more time. This time rotate the leaves by 55 degrees and click OK, not copy. Now if you want, you can choose the direct selection tool and make some variations in the imperfections. Now zoom out and select all the leaves and rotate them so they fit. If the tree trunk is above the leaves, right click the leaves, go to arrange and click bring to front. In this case it wasn't because I have drawn the leaves last. Now you can zoom in a little bit, go to the selection tool and adjust as you like. And to create some more dimension, make the sizes of the leaves vary. So select one of the leaves and shrink some of the leaves. Shrink from the opposite corner of where they are connected. So now what if you want another color for the tree trunk? Because we selected hue shift when we made our pattern brush, we can just select the stroke and select whatever color we like. For the demonstration, I will choose blue. And as you see, even the shadow color will change. And if you want the trunk to be bigger or smaller, 
You can simply just change the stroke width. 